Yo, what's up, YouTube? What's up, everybody? This is Kenny. I'm back with another video, and we're going to be actually sublimating on 50 50 blends 50% cotton, 50% polyester, and not this white. So, this is the 50 50 blend, and it's going to have the vintage look to it, and that's included in the design looks distressed anyways I'm going to take you through the tutorial and properly how to sublimate onto your garments and it is possible to do 50 50 blends let's see if it shows right about there and you see it's how it's dark gray right here this is straight out the wash straight out the wash so all the sublimation ink that didn't fuse with the polyester it's been washed out so it's doable so I got everything set up um, Actually, we are going to be going over that sweater, that crew neck, and also another blend. That way you can see what different colors can actually alternate the colors of your sublimation design. So, stay tuned. If you're new, just go ahead and subscribe right now. I got playlists for you, tutorials, some reviews, some good information. Check those videos out, hit the like button, and let's get into the video. You know, you can use whatever software you want, but I'm going to show you real quick. So if you go to print, whatever software, I'm using Silhouette Studio, go to preferences, and you should have a preset. If you haven't watched my video on Epson Equal Tank and Workforce Print and print prefaces and settings, this is where you can set it up. So whatever the paper, whatever your tray or your cassette set, you know, you can uncheck borderless. Premium, presentation, paper mat is what you want. High. Okay. Also, you want it mirror image. And you also want to check out your color correction. So with the color correction, I'm using color controls. Now, if you want to get straight to printing and have some decent colors, pick ICM. They're pretty good. Make sure that's Epson Vivid. Click the sidebar. Scion. You want positive 2. Magenta, negative 20. Yellow, negative 15. And this is the ink that I use, Cosmo Ink. Shout out to them. You know, it's not a sponsored thing, but it's the ink that I use. So my image is reverse. Before you turn on your heat press, you want medium pressure. So adjust your pressure now, whether it be a swing away or um, a, a regular clamshell, okay? Settings, 385 to 400. I'm using 385, 60 seconds. That's all you need. So you need to test this out for yourself. 385 to 400, what works best for you? Also, natural butching paper, no shiny side. Even though this is a thick sweater, I'm still gonna protect the garment from the inside because this product for your customer you don't want that ink to bleed through the inside don't have natural butching paper use regular copying paper without the shiny side you need this very important this is to get the extra fibers after you pre-press a five second pre-press to flatten out the garment 
And this picks up all the fibers because if you don't use this, you're going to have little blue streaks all over your, your design and within the fabric and it's going to look tacky and you'll be upset. Or you just wear the shirt or whatever. It's good to have heat transfer tape. Um, reason why I say medium pressure, you don't need super strong pressure because if you have a clamshell and it's laying down, right? Let's say it's down, clamped down. You still want to, if it's not automatic pop, you still want to keep your hand on it and lift up slowly. Okay. Same thing with the swing away. You want to control that pressure coming off because you because if you have no tape, you can still shift the design and give it the ghost in, give it like a shadow, uh, the terminology that they use. It's good to have some kind of scissors or paper trimmer, scissors to cut the access because you don't have to have everything, depending on your design and stuff, you know, still leave some white, still leave some white around your design you know if it's coming coming real close it's all right all this is optional you do it beforehand you place it make sure it's covering what's needed because it's going to be a design in the front flip it over design in the back okay Good to have a T-square measuring tape or a ruler. That way you can get an accurate center point. If you want to. Worst case scenario, if you don't have this kind of equipment, you can take armpit to armpit, fold it in half, press it down, and you get a line. Or you can fold it the opposite way arm to armpit to armpit press it down for a few seconds and you get your center line this is if you're selling a product to your customers you know you don't want to have nothing throwed off it's my opinion recommend doing it without the uh, butcher paper inside. Let's get your demonstration. See, I got that line right there. center point if you don't have the necessary tools to line up the, the design but I'm gonna give it a five second pre-press actually three seconds and then brush your air You got a 15 by 15 heat press or whatever size heat press you got. Let's get everything. So, see the fibers? Line up the design. Remember, face down. I just like the T-square. And you may want to center it four fingers down, it all depends. Um, actually, 
actually measure it down with the ruler from the bottom of the color. So that's three inches for my fingers, approximately. You, know, you can do a little lower. Good. If you have heat transfer tape, I like to fold one in at the end. That way it'll be a nice peel, easy peel. You don't have to worry about burning your fingers. You don't have to tape everything crazy. Since it's a small print, it's the front print. That's all I need right here. Slam down for 60 seconds. While that's going on, you can go ahead and if you're, good, if you're doing the back, go ahead and trim it up, print out your next one, get your other garment ready. Lift up slowly. Designs on there. Can't be used. Make sure you throw it away. Use the tape that's folded. Peel off. Still came out good. But we're going to press it for the second time. This is what makes your product long lasting. It's the second press. You again, still have to use another form of butcher paper. So just give it a little stretch. Place it down. Teflon sheet, just keep it from burning. Because we got to press the back. Second press can be 20 seconds, 30 seconds, 15, 20, 25, 30. I just do about 15 seconds personally, maybe 20 the most. That's done. That's the reason why butcher paper is important. To protect the top plate, even the Teflon sheet, to protect the, uh, the Teflon sheet or your thing, because if you use the Teflon sheet without this, you're gonna have that ink and it's gonna carry over to your next garment and you're gonna be pretty upset. All right, you know, just fused it in there. Uh, Whatever is on the cotton blend, the cotton part of this fabric, it's going to wash out. It's going to give it a vintage look after the wash. We'll give an update on that. This is a precaution for me. Back design, right where the collar is, that's where I'm going to place it. You're going to feel the other color right there. Because it's going to run against the seam.
correct. Same process for the tape. You got a square, square type of design. Yes, you may want to hit the four corners. You don't need a lot of tape. bigger if you don't have if you have regular copy paper and you have a big design just stack them up you might have to take that down though <clears throat> lift up slowly Now the image already looked distressed is because how I designed it. But second press. seconds still protected protect the bottom But as you can see, nothing bled through. Nothing bled through. This is the vintage look. Okay. Now we're gonna be doing the orange hoodie. Five second pre press, real quick. Get it out the way. Got it nice and flat. That thing was. Still doing four from the collar, from the hoodie collar. Tape it down. Don't forget to fold the end with the easy peel. Make sure if you're working backwards, you have your design facing correctly. Don't want to make that mistake. Did you put your paper. And 
doing hoodies, y'all. You know, make sure you get the Teflon shape. Same settings, medium pressure, 385 for 60 seconds. Let's get it. Control the plate, lift up slowly. Let's see what we got. Right, that came off. There it is. Now this is orange. So just remember, it's gonna change some stuff up in your design. But orange and black looks pretty good. Slowly lift up. to the back. Lay your butcher paper down since you wanna protect our uh, rubber, our uh, bottom equipment. Lint brush. Don't have to overkill, like I said, just want to get the corners. We got like a box design on there. down same settings 385 60 seconds let's go control the plate See how that's totally different. Totally different. That was actually a little bit light blue. Still dope.
still came out fire. So, it can be done. 50-50 blends. You know, once this gets washed, it's going to get more a faded look. Um, this is still wet. But, you know, if you see the cracking already, that's because I've done the design like that. So, just keep in mind, you know, there's more to just getting a PNG, SVG or whatever printed out you know you can add elements to your design on however you want to do it so that's it for the video thanks for watching if you're new um i hope this helped subscribe right now hit the like button all that good stuff y'all stay blessed and stay true i'll catch you on the next video